734 Games, and this is your host, Tom. And today we're here to talk about Spider-Man. Spider-Man for the PS4. Spider-Man is a PS4 exclusive, and it's a, it's a superhero game about the comic book character Spider-Man, who is Peter Parker in his day life. Now, we're going to talk about... I, I had did an impressions video where I talked to you about Spider-Man, the game, and one of the problems, one of the, the the problem that I mentioned in my impressions video was the fact that the game, well, the basically the physical version of the game was DRM. All it was was a key for you to download the digital version for the game. Now I went and got the digital version for the game, and that's what you're going to see footage from. And I mean, it's obviously the same because there's only a digital version. But anyway, that's not the biggest problem. And I always like to talk about the problems of a game before I talk about the good thing and the things I liked about the game. And the problem with this game, the biggest problem, the biggest flaw, the biggest chink in Spider-Man's armor happens to be the camera angles. The camera angles at times can be atrocious. It Basically, the camera is a dynamic camera, so it moves all around. Obviously, this is an open-world game. And so, with an open-world game, you're going to have a dynamic camera. But the problem is, is unlike, say, the Arkham games where the camera, when you get into a fight, the camera goes fixed. This game does not do that. This game, the camera, the dynamic camera, keeps going throughout the fight. So there are times where you cannot see what's going on during the fight. That is a problem with Spider-Man. But beyond, let's see, beyond that being the problem, well, I don't know if people are going to call this a problem. Now, if you're a Spider-Man comic book Marvel purist, you're going to notice that Spider-Man is a l is slightly depowered in this game. He's not as strong as he is in the comic book. He can't lift a bus. I mean, if Spider-Man were fighting a bunch of thugs in the comic book, he could web one of them and throw them at the other guys. He, he here he can't really do it like he can't really do that, especially not at the beginning of the game. You can kind of work your way up to being able to throw guys, but it's not the same, not like he could in the comic book. I mean, Spider-Man is a I remember reading back in the day that Spider-Man could lift about 10 tons. Spider-Man is pretty strong for his size, but that's that's just I don't know if someone if you're gonna think think of that as a problem or not, you know that's up to you. Now, what I want to say is for Marvel fans, this game is a must-have despite the camera angles being somewhat bad at cer certain times and the DRM issue and the the issue with the game not actually coming on the disc. This is still a fun game and it's very enjoyable. The combat is really good. The combat shines. Now, one other thing I could see is that it was kind of a problem for me, but it may not be a problem for everyone else, is that you have parts of the game where basically you the, the game kind of takes you off on a detour, and this is during the main quest where you're doing things that are, you know, like Spider-Man is, you know, he's hallucinating or doing weird stuff like that. And that, I mean, to me, those kind of diversions kind of take away from the strengths of the game. The, to me, the strength of the game here is the combat and the web swinging. Web swinging and combat are definitely Spider-Man's strengths, and those are the um, those are the things that you're going to have the most fun doing in Spider-Man. You can have there's a fast travel system throughout the game, but you won't want to use it. You want to use the um, you want to use the, the the web swinging to get around the city. Now you're going to have side quests in the game, and they're going to just kind of pop up randomly, which is pretty cool. I found, I mean, there you you kind of do the same thing in some of them, but they're fun. And now one thing I really liked about the game was collecting different suits. Throughout the game, you could collect different suits. You do different events, and you you know you get like tokens for taking pictures of certain landmarks, or you you do get crime tokens, and you 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 know you get you get tokens for that, and you put them toward you spend them toward buying Spider-Man's different outfits. And some of the outfits are really cool. His powers, you level up as well. The powers in the game, some of his extra powers are pretty cool as well. So, I mean, it, with, with that, it kind of takes away from the fact that Spider-Man is slightly less powerful than he is in the game, or in the, in the, in the comic from the game. But, uh, you know, it's, it's a fun game, especially if you're a Marvel fan. With all that being said, Spider-Man is a must-have for Marvel fans. So if you are a Marvel fan, you should probably go out and get Spider-Man. Get Spider-Man and get the Deadpool game for the PlayStation 4. Those games are a lot of fun. I did a video about Deadpool. I really enjoyed that game. That game is definitely for Marvel fans, and so is this one. I think with that, I mean, 
basically for your Marvel fans, this game is basically an 8.5. And where this game shines is the combat. Even though the camera angles can make the combat, uh, you know, a little harder at times, the game, the combat is still very solid and is the most and is the best part of the games. The cameos are great. Um, I'm not gonna. Get, I don't want to give away a lot of spoilers, but you're gonna. Stanley is gonna be in the game, which I thought was pretty cool. Stanley makes an appearance. That was awesome. I mean, this game is definitely for your Marvel fans. Now, with that being said, if you are not a Marvel fan and you're not into Spider-Man, well, you know, I saw like Digital Foundry did a video about Spider-Man, and they said that it had better graphics than God of War. Now, normally. I'm right with Digital Foundry. I use them as a source most of the time. They are a great site. I'm not taking anything away from Digital Foundry, but I totally have to disagree here. If you are a mainstream gamer and you have a choice between, say, God of War or The Last of Us Remastered and Spider-Man, I would probably pick one of those games. If you're not a Marvel fan, Spider-Man is probably more around about a 7.5. 7.5 is safe for non-Marvel fans. For Marvel fans, it's got to be, it's, it's about 8.5. I would add a whole point because, I mean, for Marvel fans, you're going to see things that are really cool. You're going to love trying out new suits. And even after you finish the game, you're going to want to go back and get more of the suits. I mean, it's, it's a fun game. It's a fun game for non-Marvel fans, too. If, you're, if you have an open mind or if you're looking for an action game, it's a fun game. But if you haven't played God of War or The Last of Us, or, um, well, just mainly those two games. And there, Sony has some other cool games, too. But I would say, if you haven't played at least those two games, oh, and obviously the Uncharted series, if you haven't played those games, then I would definitely pick those games first. I mean, you're not going to pick Spider-Man over GTA V, most of you, most of you mainstream gamers. And that's just the way it is. I mean, Spider-Man is a, is, is a great game, though. And if you do pick it up, like, say, you pick that game up as well as those other games, there's a lot for you to enjoy. And if you're on the fence and you're thinking, man, I've never really been it. I've never checked out Spider-Man. I didn't grow up, you know, reading Spider-Man comics like you, Tom. Well, if you haven't and you're sitting on the fence and you're thinking about buying this game, then you definitely should check this game out. You know, obviously, I would buy the digital version you know, buy the get the the standard edition. Try the standard edition out, and see go from there. If you're sitting on the fence, because it is a fun game, and if you're interested and you have an open mind and you're interested in checking out Spider-Man, this is a good place to start. Although it's not a comic, it's not a pure comic book game. I mean, it's not pure comic book canon in this game. It's close, but not quite. And I um, mean, you're gonna. I mean, and also one other problem with the game. I mean, it's not really a problem. I mean, it, it, those were the levels. These the levels that I'm going to mention weren't totally unenjoyable. But basically, Morales, who later becomes another Spider-Man, you could do levels as him, but he's not Spider-Man yet. He doesn't have any powers, so they're basically stealth levels. And um, Mary Jane, you do some Mary Jane levels as well. And those levels are okay, but they're not as much fun as being Spider-Man and swinging through the city and fighting Scorpion and fighting the Sinister Six, which I shouldn't have given. That shouldn't be giving anything away because they pretty much show in the E3 video that you're fighting the Sinister Six. So that's pretty much it. And I'm this video is coming to you from BitChute. Now, BitChute's a great site. If you haven't checked it out, you're probably watching. If you're watching this video, you're probably watching it on BitChute. Go ahead and check out BitChute. You can you can become a member. You can become a, a subscriber. You can help found BitChute. Basically, they're in the um, funding phase still, but you could probably get your videos on there. You just got to register and log in, and it's a great site. And I think you you know they don't go after you know they don't go after the First Amendment. They're not going to try to take down your First Amendment rights. They let everybody have a voice. BitChute is a great site, and you need to check it out. That's it for this episode of Seven Three Four Games. I hope it inspired you to play Spider-Man and um, check out Spider-Man if you've never had before. Or, um, and even more than, more so, I hope I've inspired you to check out BitChute, which is a great site. You can also check out my own website, 734 Games, although BitChute is more my website than 734games.com. And that's it for this episode of 734 Games. This is your host, Tom, signing off. 734 Games, where gaming lives.